what is going on guys this is a self elected day of the year and today I will show you how to get the game Cliffs of Dover running and uh, how to get the patches where to get the patches and uh, what to do and how to set up the configurations of the controls and how to get uh, the game looking properly so without all the pesky ugly text messages and stuff so first of all you want to go into your Steam and into your store and download the game buy the game it's about 10 euros so it's not that uh, it's not that uh, it's pretty cheap. Let's put it that way. And um, then you should uh, have it into your library right here. Um, you uh, make sure that Steam downloads all the official and stock version patches for it first. Uh, after that, you go into your internet and onto onto the. Uh, uh, forum of the Air Tactical Assault Group and now you go into the forum right here and right here is a button for the Team Fusion mod so um, now you uh, make sure that you download all these patches you can also patch uh, you can also download them all in one big zip uh, file and uh, you really want to make sure that you download and uh, you know install those patches in the right order and only do it after the, uh, steam has uh, installed all the uh, the the stock version patches so let steam finish first with the patching and then you install the first patch then the second patch third patch you know in the right order many people have a problem uh, because they did not install it in the right order and then you have to deinstall everything and uh, con start over again so uh, make sure that you do it in the right order directly so if you have any additional problems with getting the the mods running or with unzipping them or you know um, you can ask questions right here in the forum and uh, there are pretty many nice people here that are going to help you you are going to get it going and um, if you don't then then you are doing something wrong so um, it's it's not that difficult you you just install the patches in the right order and you should know how a zip file uh, unzipping uh, thing works so um, this is uh, everything that you have to do. Now you go into the game um, and I will show you how to set up the controls and uh, setting up the controls is something that many people that are not uh, familiar with um, with, with uh, flight simulations are pretty scared of. <laughs> it's a pretty pesky uh, thing to do. Um, but I will go through it with you together and we will surely get it going. So, I just wait for this whole thing to finish. Yeah, make sure that you don't play the game for too long. Because otherwise you're going to get, uh, get epilepsy. And if you don't get epilepsy, you're pretty lucky. So, here we go. Now we are going to go into the options and into the controls. And the first thing that we are going to do is set up the axis. So, um, just by the way, uh, side information, very much uh, in this game you can just control in the cockpit. So these ga this game has clickable cockpits and for example if you do a startup procedure and stuff like that, you actually don't need to equip all these things, you know, you, you, you take a look at it here and um, for example right here and you see all these things to equip and you get scared and you think oh my god this is not possible but actually you don't need most of these stuff um, I'm going to show you just what you need and it's actually not that difficult to do and um, it's not that much even so first thing you need to do is go into the axis of the aircraft and then set up a button first for the aileron so this is uh, moving your stick to the left and to the right so this is what makes your uh, plane bank to the left and to the right um, you make sure that you have uh, the game uh, detecting the right axis right here you click it and then you move the stick to the left and to the right then you uh, set up the elevator 
this is uh, moving the stick up and down. Um, then you use the rudder. Um, for many people this is going to be the twist axis of the stick, for some it's going to be uh, the pedals. And if you don't have any of those then you have a problem, because you will need one of those. Uh, then uh, you use the elevated trim. Uh, I have it on a on a on a on an axis button on my throttle right here. For the English planes, you also need uh, uh, or you can use uh, an aileron and rudder trim. Or I think it's just a rudder. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, you can equip this for the English planes. I'm most of the time just flying flying the Germans, so uh, I don't use uh, uh, horizontal trim. Uh, and if I fly an English plane, I just do it manually. Uh, I compensate just with the movement of stick. So, um, right here we have uh, the throttle. This is the next thing that you want to equip. Um, so put this on an axis and the left and right wheel brake. So, this is pretty much everything that you need to equip for the, um, for the, uh, for the axis. Um, and now we're going to take a look at the keys. Um, First of all, you go into the aircraft, so keys and aircraft, and now we are going to set up um, the important things that we need, so stuff that we don't want to uh, do uh, on, uh, by clicking stuff in the cockpit, because it will, uh, yeah, it just takes too long in some situations. So uh, right here, um, lower landing flaps position and raise landing flaps position. This is the uh, two buttons that you need for lowering and raising the flaps. So this is the first thing you want to equip. Then you scroll down. And some time after scrolling you are going to arrive at the prop pitch. So right here you need to set up a button to increase and to decrease the prop pitch. And you also need to set up a button to toggle the propeller pitch automation. Um, this is very important uh, in the uh, the German planes if you want to uh, take off. So when taxiing and stuff like that, you should disable the automation and do it manually, because otherwise you're going to have some trouble. Um, and also the prop pitch automation, it has some bugs or it it doesn't work properly if you are not already above a certain RPM. So then the next thing that you want to equip is um, scroll up again yeah here the throttle war emergency power you need to equip this with with a button and uh, this is uh, an additional boost that you get in the german planes in the in the uh, british planes um it's just uh, a placeholder so in the in the um in the British plane, the whole thing works a little bit different with the additional boost. Um, it's actually just giving 100% throttle, and there is a placeholder that prevents you from giving 100% throttle in the British planes. And you just need to flip this over. And this is something that I just do, like many other things, just directly in the cockpit by clicking on it. And um, now one last thing that you need to equip. Uh, this is in the keys and in the camera. And right here you see field of view plus and field of view minus. Um, you need to equip this because this is zooming in and out. And zooming is something that you probably will need. And it's very hard to find if you don't know what you're looking for because it's not in the view and uh, it's in the camera right here. And it's not called zoom, it's called field of view plus and field of view minus. So one last thing that I do not use myself, but uh, some people use it. It, uh, for example, if you don't have Tracker R, and this is uh, lean to gun sight, um, you might want to equip this, especially if you don't have uh, uh, Tracker R, because uh, with this you are going to take a closer look at the gun sight and you are directly aiming, and you know you will need this if you don't have Tracker R. I'm, I'm not even 100% sure if this is the right button. I hope it is. It should be. So, um, because I normally use the German uh, ones, and there it's called differently. So, um, this is pretty much everything that you need to do here. So, it's not that difficult. All you need to do is set up the axis for the, for the joystick, aileron, elevator and rudder, then uh, the elevator trim, maybe even the rudder trim, if you want to fly uh, the, uh, the British planes, 
um, then uh, left and right wheel brake, then uh, the throttle, of course, and uh, the zoom in the camera option, field of view plus and minus, and additional keys are, like I said, for the flaps, for the prop pitch, and for the war emergency power. Now I'm thinking if I forgot anything, but this is pretty much everything that you need. So it's, it's not that much. You don't have to co uh, configure 1000 different things. So um, now we're going to go back here and we're going to take a look at the video options. So um, now here in the video options, um, all you have to do is uh, make sure that the anti-aliasing is off. It doesn't really do much, so you can just as well leave it off. Um, disable the anti-epilepsy filter, because it uh, is sometimes uh, producing weird effects and it's just, um, yeah, it's just strange. Then to the uh, to the overall uh, quality of the game, to the graphics setting, this of course depends a lot on your system, but uh, make sure that you don't put the building details too high and the building amount, because otherwise you're going to get low frames above cities. Um, the Fausing, um, I'm going to leave it on for now, because uh, I think otherwise you're going to have some weird effects on the propeller sometimes. But um, this is it for the video settings. Then for the audio, very important um, to lower the voice volume or to disable the voice overall because uh, these messages of uh, these radio messages of your other pilots uh, it's just so annoying. Um, very important tip. Um, then you uh, hit apply. Uh, you say, yeah, everything is saved. Okay. Um, then another thing in the realism. Uh, you see these anthropomorphic controls. Sometimes these are enabled for some people. Make sure that this is not enabled, because this is just very weird and just annoying. Uh, everything else right here is going to be done by the server when you play online, for example. So, yeah, just make sure that the anthropomorphic controls is disabled. So, um, this is everything about that. Now we are going to take a look at uh, some additional stuff that you can do in order to make the game look more beautiful. So if you have taken a look at my videos, for example, I have disabled those uh, chat uh, server logs and uh, the, the, the te text messages and I, I think it just breaks the immersion and makes the game look, look ugly. So I have disabled all those um, and I will show you how to do that. So we are going to start just a quick mission right here. So, okay, now we are in the game right here. I'm gonna lower the throttle a little bit so you can hear me talking. Um, first of all, um, I forgot to mention that you, uh, you know, you can also equip the button for the gear and for the ignition. Uh, the defaults are on G and, and I. I use just the defaults on the keyboard. But now let's uh, take a look at how to get rid of these ugly uh, things right here, you know. On top of that you will have uh, some messages popping up here and you will have some messages popping up here and there. And what you need to do to get rid of those, and I would recommend you get rid of those because they are just plain ugly. Um, you hit Alt on your keyboard, then you click on this, uh, on this window then you click with the right mouse button and you sh just close uh, the window. It's gone. And there's another window right here that's not visible right now. It's also going to have ugly messages popping up right here. Do the same for this one. Then you have this little thing right here that shows you some uh, stuff about the uh, engine controls and stuff like that. Close that window too. And then I think there's some ugly window. Yeah. Here, this, this window, you know, depends on if you want to see it or not. It shows you your flaps position and stuff like that. So, for example, if I lower my flaps right now, see this message popping up and stuff. I have this one disabled too, so I close it. So, uh, if you want to get uh, any of those windows back, back up again, um, you click uh, with Alt and you you uh, you info window and 
you have to customize this window and put up uh, what you want to have in it. Some, some people have to check, for example, just in a window like that and stuff like that. But um, me, I just prefer to have no windows of that kind at all, because I just think that the game looks so much more beautiful if you, if you fly without those realistic windows in your face. So, um, yeah. Now you should be ready to go and install and uh, get the patches running and you know how to configure the settings and how to get the game look beautiful as it does right here and I hope you will enjoy it. Um, me myself, uh, I'm waiting for Team Fusion 5.0 and this is going to make the whole installment of the patches and stuff even easier and um, yeah, I hope uh, that you uh, are able to install the game now and have some fun with it. So, this was a self-elected day of the year, signing off, and I see you in the next video.